I'm interviewing Sergeant Stone and his dog Kish. Kesh. How long have you been an officer? I've been an officer in Holliston for nine years, right after college. How long have you been a canine officer? I've been a canine officer for about two and a half, so September of 2012. Did you choose to be a canine officer? Why? Uh, we had the opportunity. We got a, our police chief wanted to get a canine at our police department, and he put it out to everybody in the department to volunteer for it, and I was one of the ones that volunteered, and I got picked to, to get the assignment. So. Did you get to ch choose your dog? I did. I did. We went down to Plymouth where he was born and bred uh, for police work and we got to pick him out. What kind of training do you need to do with your canine? Uh, when I got the dog, when I got canine cash, I had to go down to the sheriff's department in Plymouth and we had to train for about 16 weeks and we taught him all obedience and tracking and building searches and evidence recovery, all the different stuff that he's able to do, we had to do in front of a canine training group. What does the dog bite on during training? Uh, we have, I can actually show you a little bit later, I should have brought that up. A big uh, cushion. We have a big sleeve cushion um, that goes from the, your wrist all the way up to your arms. We train him to bite on different arms. And then we also have a big suit uh, that we call a bite suit um, that teaches him to bite on legs and arms in different areas. So he doesn't learn just to learn to bite on an arm, but he'll b bite on legs or wherever. Can you please show us m me the equipment you have? Sure. Let's start with this one. Any idea what this might be? No idea. No idea? This is a harness that goes on. It's actually upside down. This is a harness that goes on, on cash. So if this was the dog, his head would be up here, this goes around his body, and this is a handle, so if I had to lift him and put him over a fence or, or be able to do something with him or move him along, I can do that. And then I can clip my leash on one of these buckles here. So this is a leather type harness that we use. This is the same type of harness, but different material that we use for different things. So this one, his head would be up here. Mm -hmm. His tail comes out here, a big ring for my leash here. This is what we use for when we track people. We track different things. Um, this is the type of harness that we use. Um, do you know what this is? Oh, yeah, the thing that goes around his mouth so he can't bite. Sure, yeah, it's a muzzle. Any idea why would we want this? Why would we want to have him wear a muzzle? So if he didn't, u if he didn't want to use the suit, you can just do that. Exactly, yep. If we're, not, yep. if we're going to be in a big crowd or a big, um, uh, we have to move a crowd or we have to get to an area where we don't want somebody to accidentally get bit, we can put this on him, he can breathe, he can drink water, he can eat food, he can do everything he can out of this, he just can't open his mouth all the way. This is my tracking line, if you want to feel, it's like a big rubber material so it doesn't get wet, doesn't get moldy, and it's 15 feet long so I would take this big leash and I would hook it to the back of this and he would pull me and show me which way he would track, okay, you know what this is? A bag. And what, what do you think this bag is for? Any idea? It's got all his food, all his meals. So everything he eats is out of my hand. And that's what's different. He doesn't have a dog bowl at home. He eats everything out of my hand. So his entire food, meal, and I'll show you when I bring him up, this is how he eats out of my hand. And that's how we do obedience. Are you going to put it on the muzzle when he comes down here? Um, if you want me to, I can. But he won't. <laughs> no, no, I can leave him off. And any idea what this would be? Again. Yeah. What do you think it's for, though? What do you think it's used for? Um, what do I what do I wear under mine to protect me? Any idea? You're wearing armor yep. underneath. Yep. I wear armor to protect me, and this is armor to protect him. So this is bulletproof, and this is stab proof. So if somebody wanted to hurt Kesh or or punch Kesh or hurt Kesh, same thing. This is where his head would be up here. This covers all his body, all his organs and his two legs come Wait, out here. So you're bulletproof? Oh, I trust is, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's some of the equipment that we use. Alrighty. Does Kesh know the difference between the two harnesses when he has that on? He definitely does. He definitely does. So this is what we use for more of a tracking um, article evidence recovery type. I can see he bit out of it a little. Actually, this was his puppy one. I brought the old one up. And then this is more of a... Um, an agitation where we're going to do like a building search thing. So depending on which collar we use, which 
harness we use, which leash we use, through all the training, he gets used to certain certain things. He knows when this comes out, we're going to eat. He knows when this comes out, we're going to be in a big crowd, maybe. So he knows all the different all the different equipment that we use. What kind of crimes do you go to? A lot of crimes that we use the dog for is when um, people break into a house or break into a building, and if it's at nighttime and they leave and they leave on foot, or somebody gets lost, we are able to track them through human scent. So that's what we use the dog for. Do you get called upon to support SWAT team? Uh, I'm not part of the SWAT team, but I am part of the like, special operations part that we use. So when we need resources or we have uh, the need for uh, specialized areas, I come out and, and do that. But there are definitely dogs that do SWAT call out specifically. Um, Kesh doesn't do that, but we, we do work with them at training and stuff like that. Do you take your dog home? I do. He comes home with me every day. He sleeps at my house, lives with me and my wife, and I have another dog, Toby, that he lives with and hangs out with too. Is there any special, any, is there anything speci special you need to do with your dog? Uh, we train him every day, so what, like, like he's got to eat every day. So at some point, I can't just take this and dump it on the floor or dump it in a bowl. So he's got to be able to eat every day. So in order for him to eat, I need to have him do stuff for me. So if it's like, I'll feed him a little bit of, I guess we can call it his breakfast today. When he comes up, I'll give him some food and that'll give him some obedience. And then maybe later this afternoon, we'll do a track. We'll do something else for the rest of his food. So it's every day we do do something. Does the does the dog play? Uh, he does. He does, yep. He plays with my other dog, Toby, uh, when we're not working. Uh, when we're here at work, and like right now, he's, he's at work. He thinks he's at work, and, he, you know, he's in the back of the cruiser, and that's his, that's his work time. When he goes home and he's in his home kennel, he knows the difference, and he knows it's home time. Does he play with other pets? He does. He plays with Toby, uh, my other dog, like I said, and I take them for neighborhood walks just about every day. We do like a three-mile loop, and... He, that's his part of his routine, and usually we do it right before work. So usually by the time we get to the walk portion of the day, he knows, guess what's next? Time to go to work. <laughs> Does he play with children? Uh, I don't have children. Um, he's uh, mainly a work dog, so I don't really have children for him to interact with. But when he's at work, um, the only one that handles him and touches him or pets him is me. So that's just kind of the work relationship that we have with him. If some... Well, uh, if someone was interested in becoming a canine officer, what advice would you give him? Uh, make sure you have plenty of time, plenty of free time to donate. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. Um, it's an everyday thing, um, but it's very rewarding. I get to have somebody with me in my cruiser. Um, I have my own cruiser that I drive at work, and I'm the only one that has somebody else with me in my cruiser with me. So. I always have someone to back me up, and he's a loyal, a loyal dog, and he's a pretty cool-looking dog, too, when you see him. What kind of education does he need? Does he need? Um, he, like I said, we went to the training academy um, for about six months, and when we go back to, if, if we do any type of other training, we go back and, and do in-service training with, with the canine group. Mm -hmm. So. That was it. That was it? All right, good questions. Yeah. Nice. Very nice dog. Yeah. So we, let me know when that's on. We're on. Okay. Matt, you want to stand to one side? Matt, stand to one side so we can see him. One of the Matt's. But this is what, this is how we, this is how I feed him. See how when, as soon as I came in, mm -hmm. what did he do? Where did he sit? Right in front of you. And where's the food? Right there. Okay, so that's, this is his food bowl. So this is basically telling me that he wants to eat. Okay. So just give him a little bit of a time, just his regular kibble. Oh, I'll, I'll, I gotta do it. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then, in a position here. Oh. Yeah. Can I? So when he makes, when he gets in that right position, that the position that I want him in, I can feed him. And as we do as a puppy, he doesn't have to sit on the floor. So if I if I put the food up here, he'll eat it up here. Okay.
okay, there's no, but why do you think I do that? Any idea why I have him go up on tables like that? Uh. Environmentally, I don't want him to be scared. So my other dog, if he was going to eat, and it was, I wanted him to sit in the snow, do you think my other dog would eat? No. No, he's spoiled. He doesn't care, okay? So if I want him to jump up on the table to eat, okay, so he's not going to get the food out of my hand until he figures out what I want him to do. That's where I want him to be. Okay. He can jump high. Did that seem like that was hard for him? No. No. Okay. So he's a very, very agile dog. How high can he jump? Uh, he, can, he can probably jump a six-foot fence. Okay. Wow. So if I had him here, up on the table, See where he just follows my food, my hand with the food? So he just wants, he, he, this for him, this is work, okay? And see how he hits it? So it's good. I give him a little bit of food because that's what I did. They missed the little piece right there. <laughs> Get it, buddy. Okay. Now he's going to adjust his position. See where his, his focus is? Mm -hmm. Lady. Okay. And he's going to adjust his position so we can eat. And he goes back into the down, okay? Even at home, even on his day off, so okay. that he gets this this bond with me. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of gross, <laughs> but it's I'm the only one he eats out of. So there's no confusion as to who he gets his meals from. And do you see all that? Do you see all the slobber in the in the foam around his mouth? Do you know what that's what that's from? Nope. When he breathes, so he's breathing all that food in right now. All that slob it means he's working. It's pretty gross, but I know that he's very into eating and feeding and you know he's hungry so he knows that if he doesn't want to listen and he doesn't want to do it like if I don't want him to lie down like that he's gonna do whatever he can to get into the right position to get the food and then the reward is to open my hand okay so if I say down so say I don't want him down I don't want him down I don't want him to stand like that I want him to sit and then I reward it by like that Okay. So his attitude now has kind of changed. So I basically told him, feeding time is kind of over. Do you think he's caring about the food much? He probably would still eat, but he wants to play. So in order to, to, to train and play, again, we do the same thing. He's got to do what I want him to do. If he bites this when I don't tell him to, then he gets a correction. So he, he has to learn to do it only when I ask him to. Do you think he wants to play? Yeah. Boss. Okay, so this is how we train him. Okay, this is this is bite development. This is play time for him. Post, it's obedience. So he gets back in that. What position is he in? Sitting. That same feeding position that we were in. So that's where it starts. It starts with feeding, and then now as soon as I say one little word, bus. Okay, he knows to, to do that. Okay, so environmentally, remember I said up on the table. Okay, you think he's gonna let go? You think he's gonna let go? And if he does, he's gonna. He doesn't care what he bumps into. He doesn't care what he hits. And that's all host, host seats. That goes back to if I just fed him always like that, and I always went up to him. Okay, go ahead, bye. He's gonna be very timid when it comes to environmental. He doesn't care whether I'm wherever I am. Okay? You cheated. What language do you speak to uh, Dutch and German. It's a little bit of Dutch and German commands. So watch what he'll do to come to me, okay? With the sleeve on. Okay? Like environmentally, remember I told you he has no regard for his body. So he's gonna try to get this no matter what. Us. 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 Okay, so if this was a bad guy and I didn't have the sleeve on, do you think this would hurt? Oh, yeah. You think he could pull me? Yeah. I weigh 200 pounds, okay? He weighs 63, okay? So this is his little, that's his little reward. Post, 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 okay? And the whole time we want to do this, we want to have him under control. See? See? And he learns that when it's time to work, it's time to work. When work is over, work is over. So right now, we're all done. We're not going to play with the toy anymore. We're not going to do the bite sleeve. 
and he has to learn that that's it. Do you think he still wants to play? If I let him still play, who do you think's who's the boss then? Is he the yeah. boss or am I the boss? Yeah. Okay. Who do I want to be the boss? You. Okay. So that's how this whole canine thing works. You want it to be. He wants, and he likes it. He wants to have. He wants to have somebody to direct him where to go. Okay. <laughs> He still wants to play. So I'll distract him. You can take um, the sleeve and just put it away because he'll, he'll stay distracted. So you can just put it back on the table. I know you want to play. You want to play, I know. So any other questions? Anything like that? So it kind of shows you how he can come in and be very docile and very open. Does he? The little, do you know what that's, why he does that? Any idea? It's his nerves. He's very anxious right now. I put him on, he's, how far is this? How about two feet? He's on a two foot leash in between a table with three people he doesn't know. Do you think he's stressed out right now? He's very stressed out. Okay? That's why he stays and looks to me. He's like, out of anybody in this room, who do you think he knows? You. Me. So he looks to me, hey, dad, what's... Is this okay? Are we okay? If one of you were threatening to me, see where he stands? He's not standing behind me. He's not standing next to me. He's standing in between you guys and me. Okay? So his, not a toy. His ultimate at the end of the day, no matter what situation we're in, he's here to protect me and help me. Okay? And he's another tool that we have. So that's kind of how we use him, why we use him. That's one of his uh, harnesses that he has. And that's just a simple, we could go do a big long track in the snow, but yeah, no, that's too great. cold. Yeah. He's a beautiful dog. Thanks. Yeah. You know what kind of dog he is? Yeah. Take a guess. Uh, do you what most police dogs are? Uh, German Shepherds? Yeah, I was say German Shepherds. Yep. He's a Dutch Shepherd and a Belgian Malinois. So it's like a lot of the ones they use in the army. Yeah. Uh, that's why his face is all black yeah. and he has that brindle and he's smaller. So he's a, a German Shepherd to usually like anywhere from 70 to 90 pounds. What was that? Stressed out, right? Yeah. Sh shaking. Yeah. He's kind of telling me, hey, I want to go back to where it's it's comfortable. How, how old is he? Uh, he'll be three in about two weeks. Come here. Oh, wow. Come here. Come here. Okay. okay. So from that very beginning when we uh, feed him by hand, that's a big part of how we get to this. Because I picked him up at a breeding program. I didn't know who he was, what he was. He didn't know who I was. I didn't know who he was. So it takes a long time to kind of get to... I don't have to tell him, hey, stand there and make sure these guys are okay. He wants to do that automatically. Because at the end of the day, he gets everything from me. He gets his food, his water, his shelter, all that stuff only comes from me. So it's kind of a unique thing that canine people get that other people don't. Huh. And he worked all night, so he's he's been a good boy. Huh. I know I don't get lonely at work. <laughs> so, awesome. any other questions? No? no? All right.